welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Stoning of Soraya M., released in the year 2009. The movie is based on a true event that happened in a remote Iranian village named Kupeya in 1986. One morning, a woman named Zara comes to the bank of a river that runs through the village. She finds fresh human bones by the river and cleans them before giving them a proper burial. Somewhere nearby, a French journalist named Fredoun Sahabjam is traveling in his car when it breaks down on a deserted highway. A passing bus tows the car to a repair shop in Kupaye. Zara notices Fredoun inside the car and is intrigued. She follows the car to the repair shop and approaches Fredoun. She tries telling him something about the villagers but is stopped when the head mullah and the mayor interrupt. They're clearly trying to hide something from Fredoun, but he's unaware of their tactics. They send Zara away, proclaiming that she's just an unimportant crazy woman. However, she's not ready to give up just yet. When Fredoun goes to a cafe to rest until the car is repaired, she pursues him again. This time, she writes him a message on paper, giving him the directions to her house. Initially, Fredoun is skeptical, but her repeated requests interest him. He follows the map to her home and she happily welcomes him. When asked about what she wants to talk about, Zara requests him to record everything she's about to say because it's something everyone in the world has to listen to. Zara then starts by saying the people of the village are evil to their cores and must be punished for the horrible things they've done to her niece Soraya. The scene then shifts to a flashback. Soraya is a simple woman with two sons and two daughters. Although her husband Ali is abusive, Soraya never complains and is always there for him. But Ali pays off her kindness by falling in love with a 14-year-old girl from another village. He wants to marry the girl and is ready to divorce Soraya for her. However, if Soraya divorces him, she will not be in a condition to take care of her daughters for whom Ali refuses to pay child support. He wants to take his sons and new wife to the city and start a new life. When Soraya doesn't agree on divorcing him, Ali sends the villager's head called the Mullah to convince her. The Mullah doesn't want to get involved in the family's matter, but Ali uses Mullah's past as a criminal to blackmail him. The man then visits Soraya at her house and tries to tell her of the benefits she will get from the divorce. Ali is willing to give her custody of her daughters, a house, and a piece of land. But Soraya knows that the barren piece of land cannot sustain three people. Seeing a helpless woman in front of him, Mullah's intentions waver. He gets closer to her and suggests she turn into his mistress. Suddenly, Zara barges in and kicks him out of the house, having heard his proposal. When he retaliates, she calls him a disgrace to their religion and insults him. The Mullah, who is well respected in society, is hurt by the harsh words. He vows to end their lives before leaving. After that, Soraya tells Zara about the girl Ali wants to marry. It turns out that the girl's father is awaiting a death penalty in prison. Since Ali works as a guard, he is promised to help the man escape in turn for his daughter's hand in marriage. That evening, when Ali returns home, he calls Soraya names for not cooking the food properly. He has even pitched his sons against their mother, feeding them lies about her character. They believe that their mother wants them to live a miserable life and is at fault for not divorcing Ali. When Soraya takes a stand for herself, he beats her for talking loudly. Having had enough, Soraya takes her daughters and runs to Zara's house for protection. Zara doesn't want Ali to get angrier than he already is. Hence, she asks Soraya to return home. As they discuss the matter, the mechanic of the village named Hashem comes to them asking for help. It turns out that his wife is ill and is about to die. Zara rushes to his home and finds her already dead. Hashem is devastated as he has a disabled son who needs constant care. The higher officials are worried for him since he cannot take care of his son along with working at his shop. Hence, they appoint Soraya to do the household work for him in turn for some money. Soraya accepts the job hoping to be independent and get away from her abusive husband. But she doesn't know that this is one of Ali's plans to get rid of her without letting go of his assets. Starting that week, Soraya goes to Hashem's house regularly to cook dinner and take care of his son. She stays there only when necessary and returns home right after Hashem returns from work. She also avoids talking to him as much as possible. Through all this, Ali keeps a close eye on them waiting to strike when the iron is hot. One night, he tells Mullah his true intention for letting Soraya work at Hashem's house. He wants to accuse her of performing adultery with Hashem. 
Since the penalty for such a crime is stoning to death, he won't have to pay her any money and could marry anyone without a problem. Moolah doesn't want to help but is blackmailed into spreading a false rumor about Hashem and Soraya. A few days later, Zara gets a hint about the gossip from her female friends. When the rumor gets more popular, Ali goes to the town's mayor to file an official complaint against Soraya. However, the mayor refuses to believe the accusation without two witnesses. Ali then goes to Hashem and asks him to be the fake witness. Hashem, being a good man, refuses to do so but is blackmailed using his son's life. At last, a scared Hashem agrees to do as told, not thinking about the consequences of his action. The next day, Ali finally executes his plan in front of the entire village. He drags Soraya out of the house and beats her brutally. The commotion only stops when Zara intervenes and brings Soraya to her house. When the matter reaches the officials, the mayor and Hashem also arrive at Zara's house to listen to Soraya's side. But Hashem affirms that he has been in bed with Soraya, which changes the direction of the case entirely. The women know that Soraya is innocent but cannot prove it. The law of the village is so weak that no cross-questions are asked before declaring Soraya a culprit. The men believe that if she's not punished for her crimes, the women of the village will take it as a sign to do whatever they please. By now, a crowd of villagers has gathered outside to protest against Soraya. They are excited to watch her get the punishment. As the last resort to save her, Zara packs her and Soraya's luggage to flee. However, the men have called the armed forces to protect the house and trap them inside. In the end, Soraya accepts her fate and hugs her daughters for the last time. She hopes that someday the girls will know her mother was innocent. In contrast, Soraya's sons and their friends are gathering stones that are to be thrown at their mother. Soraya is dressed in a white gown like a bride for the punishment. Before leaving, Zara and she sing a song to calm themselves. A while later, Soraya is taken to the market in front of everyone. She locks eyes with Hashem who looks away, knowing that what he did was wrong. His action cannot be backed, but he reassures himself by thinking he lied for his son's life. Everyone in the village gathers to take part in the stoning, almost as if the incident has woken up an animal inside of them. They don't see that they're about to kill someone, they are only hungry for blood. The mullah declares that every stone that hits Soraya will increase the village's honor. He encourages them to put all the effort they can to punish her. After the speech, the crowd is even more aggressive. The men dig a hole in the ground and bury half of her torso inside to prevent her from moving. The mayor gives her a chance to say her last words. Soraya asks the villagers how they can do this to their daughter, neighbor, and a woman they know. The crowd ignores her comment, revealing that nothing can stop their animalistic needs. In a house nearby, Soraya's daughters are made to cover their ears so they wouldn't have to hear their mother's cry. The first person allowed to hit her is her own father. He disowns her and gets ready to throw the first stone. Zara attempts to save Soraya's life by begging repeatedly and even offers to switch places with her. But because of the interruption, the men drag her aside. Soraya's father throws the first stone but misses. The same happens with the second and third stone, which makes the women believe that God is telling them Soraya is innocent. The mayor believes them and tries to stop the execution, but the mullah pulls him back. He knows that if she's left alive now, he will have to face the chargers for false accusations. Hence, to make sure the punishment goes through, Ali throws a stone himself that hits Soraya in the forehead. The crowd cheers at the perfect hit. Then, Ali hands his sons the stones and urges them to do the same. Even Hashem is given a stone, but he refuses to hit her and walks away. Moments later, the entire crowd joins them and showers the poor woman with stones. Her white gown turns red, but they continue hitting her like animals. The women of the village start to vomit and run away, not being able to watch Soraya suffer. After hours of torture, the villagers finally get tired and stop. Soraya has long been limp and her face is hardly recognizable. Ali checks if she is dead and finds out she is still breathing. The people pick up the stones again and shower her with attacks for the second time. As she finally dies, they leave her dead body as it is and go home to rest. Later at night, the women help her dead body to the riverbank and clean it. Overnight, wild animals devour it and Zara buries the remains in the morning. Back in the present, Zara completes telling the story to the journalist. 
He has tears streaming down his face by the time she gets done. He plans to publish the tape that has recorded the entire story, but Zara knows that the men from the village will try to stop him. As a precaution, she hides the tape with her. In the following scene, we see Ali in his car returning from another village. He informs the mullah that his marriage to the teenage girl has been cancelled because he could not spare her father from execution. When Hashem claims that he lied for nothing, the mayor finds out that he was lied to by Ali and the mullah. He is regretful to have hurt an innocent woman, but since he was also a part of the execution, he is afraid to admit he was wrong. The journalist attempts to drive away with his belongings, but the mullah stops him with the help of a revolutionary guard. They seize his tape recorder and destroy all of the tapes. But their plan is proven to be fruitless when the journalist drives further away and receives the actual tape from Zara. He drives away before being caught. Zara celebrates her win by screaming that the whole world will know of her niece. In the final scene, it is narrated that the journalist published the story soon after. It became an international sensation that made people realize the severity of women's oppression that prevails in the different corners of the world. The movie ends by showing us the only picture of Soraya ever taken. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.